What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Dolphins in Depth <laughs> podcast. I'm Daniel Yafusi. That is David Neal. Thanks so much for tuning in. Quick reminder before we start, make sure to subscribe to the Miami Hero YouTube page, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Make sure to subscribe to the Miami Herald as well. And if you're a Dolphins fan, you definitely want to subscribe to the Miami Herald after what took place Tuesday ahead of the NFL's trade deadline at 4 p.m. After a lot of speculation, reports, rumors, the Dolphins not only, not just, they didn't just make one move. They made two trades ahead of the NFL trade deadline. Obviously, the headlining move being acquiring pass rusher Bradley Chubb from the Denver Broncos in a big move. Um, the Dolphins, as we had talked about in previous weeks, struggling defense, pass rush, not lacking the juice that it needs. Um, Dolphins seemingly take care of those issues with this move for Bradley Chubb, who uh, is in his fifth season after being a top five pick, the number five overall pick in the 2018 draft. Um, he has 26 sacks. Um, he uh, has five and a half sacks this season, which will actually lead the Dolphins. Right now, Jalen Phillips has three sacks. Um, and in that trade, the Dolphins send out the second of two first round picks that they had. I mean, a couple months ago, we're talking about two first round picks. What can the Dolphins potentially do with that last year? Uh, but the Dolphins are seemingly all in now. Obviously, we know one of those draft picks got taken away as part of the tampering scandal. Uh, but the Dolphins send away this, their second first round pick, the one that they got from the San Francisco 49ers um, in the wake of, you know, the Trey Lance deal uh, a year back. Um, they send a, their 2020 third, first round pick from San Francisco to Denver, um, a 2024 fourth round pick as well as running back Chase Edmonds, who they had signed to a two-year $12 million deal back in March. He was thought to be maybe the face of this new running game under Mike McDaniel. He only lasted eight games in Miami. He's headed to Denver as part of that deal that brings in Bradley Chubb, as well as a fifth-round pick for the Broncos. Now, you heard me say earlier that that wasn't the first, that wasn't the only move the Dolphins made. That was the first of two. So in the second trade that they make, they go out, and add to the backfield depth after sending out Chase Edmonds and getting San Francisco 49ers running back Jeff Wilson, familiar name to Mike McDaniel, who is obviously the offensive coordinator in San Francisco. Uh, the Dolphins announced that they are sending out a fifth round pick next year to get Wilson in the backfield, add some depth, maybe a one two punch with him and Raheem Mostert, who's been the lead back. Ooh, now that we're all caught up, you know, I've been writing for the past give or take four or five hours, researching, writing, making sense of this move. Um, and, you know, we, we talked back in March about the Dolphins move for Tyree Kill, trading for him, sending out a bunch of draft picks just the day after getting to Ron Armstead. And we've talked about how that um, was the, the signaling or the sign of a team that believes that they're ready to compete now. Well, after a five and three start, um, Tua Tungabailoa really emerging in year three, I mean, this is the ultimate, we're all in move. I mean, you give away all, all you know, a whole bunch of <laughs> draft picks. I mean, I don't even know how the Dolphins have any draft picks left now. I, know they, I think they got a second rounder next year, and I'm not sure after that. Um, but, you know, sending out some more draft picks to get a high-profile pass rusher, a proven pass rusher, um, you know, amid this 5-3 and three start that has a lot of people excited about Miami's playoff chances. I mean, again, it just reinforces that, um, they're all in. Obviously, um, we had spoken last week and I asked, you know, should the Dolphins get a cornerback? Should they get an offensive lineman? Pass rusher really wasn't a move that was in the back of my mind because I, I saw most of their issues being in the secondary where you don't have Byron Jones, you lose Nick Needham, you lose Brandon Jones, or even on the offensive line um, where the Dolphins have lost Austin Jackson. And now we, we found out yesterday that um, left guard Liam Eikenberg is going to be out um, for at least a month. Um, pass rusher just wasn't that the type of move that I thought that the Dolphins would, would make at the trade deadline. You know, I thought that Jalen Phillips was coming on strong. Um, obviously, Emmanuel Agba hasn't been the guy um, that he that he's been in the previous two years when he led the team in sacks. Um, but I thought they were getting some good stuff from a combination of guys, whether it was Jalen Phillips, Melvin Ingram, Zach Sealer, Christian Wilkins. Um, and again, I just thought that you know with Boyer's kind of history, Josh, uh, excuse me, the defensive coordinator Josh Boyer's history as the defensive uh, coordinator and being a secondary coach in the past, um, I thought that maybe they'd get a cornerback beside Xavier Howard. Um, but again, I mean, it's it's a move that I think could have a tri trickle down effect. I mean, you can never have too many pass rushes, as you know, you and I have said, David. You can never have too many pass rushes. 
too many cornerbacks. Um, so now maybe they don't have to blitz as often. Maybe, you know, you know, you, you put more guys in coverage and you just blitz for, um, but again, I, I think that this is just the signaling of a team that, you know, we just seem so far removed from the 2019, the quote unquote tank year, stripped down rebuild year, 2020 kind of going through, you know, hiccups and bumps with Tua as a rookie quarterback. I mean, the team is, this is a team that's like, Hey, we're here. We think we're a top dog in the AFC. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how this move pays dividends in the upcoming weeks. Well, I think if you like you know, team March, to me, I saw that as let's give, let's build an offense around our quarterback and see if he's our quarterback. You know, you you, you can't, you know, it's 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 the man it's the Manning rule as seen by Archie Manning's career and Peyton Manning's career. You don't know what you have there until you put something around it, around him, and then you know, then you really know what you have um and these moves are obviously said okay yeah we're all we're all and we're all in and uh, you know yeah we talked about cornerback last week um didn't think really think about pass rush but you know we've said your pass defense starts with your pass rush and um there's a reason in the nfl that sacks come off passing yards and that's where your pass defense starts uh, you know, that's the way you can protect the secondary or try to protect the secondary. That's yeah. that might be might be struggling, uh, might be trying to find itself, get itself together. gives time gives time to get itself together. And so when and when it does get itself together, now you got some, you know, something else. Um, again, being the you know gonna gonna be old old man history geek here, the 49ers became the 49ers of the you know the Montana Walsh era era not just when you know it wasn't just oh you know Joe Montana suddenly got great no he got better but what they did was they drafted Ronnie Lott Carlton Williamson and Eric Wright and they put him with the White Hicks in the secondary and then they traded for Fred Dean who was this incredible pass rusher at a in, in with San Diego but was having a contract issue and that immediately, what that did was that immediately gave them a pass defense in an NFL that was really becoming, starting to become very pass heavy. And that's when the San Francisco 49ers became the San Francisco 49ers. They went from 27th to like third in pass defense or something like that. And Fred Dean, you, you he was one of those guys you just, you almost couldn't block. <laughs> and so that's kind of what the Dolphins have made a similar move here. Um, you know, let's let's beef up. Okay, let's beef up the pass rush. Let's get this guy who's a problem on every who's going to be a problem on every down. They have to account for him. He's going to create. You know, it's the old thing. He's going to create more openings for other guys. He's going to create more opportunities. And meanwhile, our secondary can get its act together. Can get healthy. Can get experience. Can get whatever. And so our defense will be ready when we got to go to Buffalo in December. Yeah. And that you know, and chase and chase that big boy around, and try to and try to bring him down, and try to or you know keep him from you know running out the pocket and you know hitting hitting digs down the downfield or running running himself for twenty yards. Yeah, that's definitely what this is all about. And then the the running the the running back uh, yeah, Jeff Wilson, which is is uh, you know I think it's a case of okay now these are guys who ran the system that yeah. Mike McDaniel ran before. So let's speed up the process of, you know, which they seem to be getting better at anyway. But let's yeah, the, run, the running the game has started to started to click a little right. bit more. Right. Let's so let's let's speed up the pro that process, which can only help your offense more, can only can take some pressure off to to uh, uh also, you know, just will get you more points when you're not playing the, you know, Detroit Pintos. And so you know that that seems very obvious. Uh, Chase Edmonds, yeah, if he was meant to be the face, he turned out to be the butt. You know, this just didn't and it, it just, just didn't really click. Just didn't yeah. really click yet. Had a lot of drops. Um, it seemed like you know he wasn't 
I mean, obviously most most of it has the the familiarity with the system, but um, you know, they just weren't even getting a lot of the juice in the run game that maybe you would have expected. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I thought that, that I thought happens. that, yeah, and, that and I thought that maybe you know he could have. It could have salvaged, you know, him in a role where maybe maybe he was just a third down back. But obviously, maybe you know, obviously he goes to a situation where maybe um he's gonna have you know more carries. Um, and obviously it's it's a it's kind of a win win for the Dolphins because they're able um to kind of shed some of that salary um that they, they were gonna have to pay Chase Edmonds. They get it back who they think can be just as productive, if not pr- more productive, in a system that he's. I mean, it's the exact same system, right? Um, it, so it's, so it's, it's a win win in terms of that. I mean, this happens a lot. I mean, I mean, you know, I kind of made a joke about Chase Evans, but, but Chase Evans, but it, this happens all the time in the league and in, in, in any sport. Uh, as Ron Wolf with the Raiders used to say, you know, he's going to be a good player in the league. He's just not going to be a good player with us. Yeah. And some guys just aren't aren't good fits. Um, and you know, so you know, he just did maybe didn't fit the system. Uh, just need and he already. You know, everybody saw the writing on the wall and said, okay, let's just, let's end this experiment, move on, get somebody in here who uh, knows what exactly what we're doing and can do it the exact way we want. So, you know. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's been interesting. I saw a, a tweet from Adam Schefter that, that said that, you know, there were 10, um, I guess, trade deadline deals or let me see if I can find the exact tweet, but I know that he said there was a record number of deals that were, that were, that were made. Cause usually, I mean, what we're used to, I mean, this today looked like Tuesday looked like NBA free agency in terms of the the deals and the the types of names that were being dealt. Um, and, and the exact tweet here is there were a record 10 trades made Tuesday, the most ever made on an NFL trade that deadline day. Um, so, you know, it's, Things are things are changing. I mean, the way NFL front offices are operating is definitely changing, and it's fun. I mean, it was fun. Obviously, when you get the breaking news and you're like, "Dang, I gotta write all this," but then you kind of take a breath, take a deep breath, and you take a step back, and you're like, "This is fun!" Like all the movement and whatnot. It's it's because you know, frankly, the league sucks this year, and everybody thinks they've got a chance. Everybody, everybody does, yeah. I mean, yeah, we saw like, we saw the Vikings trade for you know tight end TJ Hawkinson, and I saw that move, and I was like, "What?" And obviously they have some injuries over there, but again, I mean that's a team that's I think six and one, and they think that they can win their division and make a right. run. And and did, and did the Vikings really strike you as uh, they, they're again they're six and one, their record is what it is. But they didn't but strike they me as strike, buyers. They didn't strike me you, as buyers. You, you didn't look at them and go, "That's a Super Bowl." I might be seeing them in February, right? Yeah. Heck no, <laughs> heck no, please. You know they they look they look they look fraudulent even while they're beating the Dolphins. They were and you know you yeah. I, keep waiting for the Giants to be revealed as fraudulent and I'll probably keep winning, waiting for that. If even if they win the Super Bowl, I'll be like, what the heck's going on? But it, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's, I, it, I think it's just kind of a trend kind of out of the last couple of years, you know, but like I said, the Rams, they won the Super Bowl, but they weren't a kind of team that made you go, whoa, that's, you know, that's a, that's a great, that's a great team or that's a great champion. And we're in a season where you got, you know, Buffalo looks really good, um, but and Kansas City looks really good. Uh, the Eagles just keep winning, and they've got something now. Dallas, Dallas actually kind of looks. They, no, no, I know it's it's always rough whenever the Cowboys are good. It's 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 always a headache. But I hate and I hate to say it, but their defense looks, you know, looks like Doomsday Three, and they've got. You know they've got a running game going, and Dak looks like he's get he's going to be coming into you know getting back into integrated in the offense. That's going to be a really good team. So, but there's everybody else kind of thinks there's nobody that makes you that just jumps out so far ahead of the pack that so everybody thinks they're kind of in it, yeah. and the Dolphins have every right to think they're in it. You know, yeah, they're five and three. They're you know, but let's you know you look at their losses and there's you know you you kind of thinking yeah this they're right there they're right there and they're they're the only team that's beaten buffalo so that that's the team that's the consensus best team they're the team they beat them so i you know they i think they should do they should do this because you don't know when you're going to get this shot again you know, you might think uh, we're going to have all these guys together for all these years. And it's all going to be, you know, you're going to have a lot of chances. 
Yeah, Dan, you know, Dan Marino thought that too. Or or the Dol I mean, Dan Marino did, the Dolphins did, you know. And yeah, I was gonna say that happened. he went to the Super Bowl in eighty four, was it? Yeah, and second his second season. Yeah, it's his second well, year you know, he set all kinds of records that set for stayed for a very long time. Great he had a great career, and it you know, they they never they got back to a couple of AFC championship games, but you know, one thing or another, you know, another team being better, <laughs> but or whatever, but you just never know when this kind of thing when you know you look at it, you just never know when it's going to come along. We're halfway through the season. You look up and you go, yeah, we, we can, we can be that team this year. We can win it this year. And so you might as well go for it when, because you don't know when it's going to happen again, no matter yeah. how well set up you are for the future. Yeah. I mean, like you said, when you have a window of opportunity, um, you, you just got to go for it. I mean, we saw the Rams do that last year with, yeah. um, you know, getting Von Miller, getting Odell Beckham Jr. Obviously, uh, Things aren't aren't going as smoothly this season, but you know a lot of Rams fans, you know they'll they'll take that because of you know the Super Bowl uh, championship yeah. that they're able to yeah. get last year. You, you you think anybody on the Rams team who who was there last year is complaining about that this year? No, you think any of those fans, you know, any of those fans are going, ah, you know, we really shouldn't have traded, but I mean, we shouldn't really shouldn't have done that. Not at all. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh definitely definitely a fun day if you're if you're a Dolphins fan. Uh, yeah. Definitely an exciting day, and uh, like I said, we'll see we'll see uh how, how all those moves pay off in the coming weeks. Two quick notes or two kind of quick thoughts I wanted I wanted to make. Um, th this is definitely a move that you know is I think is also a testament to Tua's growth, and I'll say it because you know we entered training camp and talking about how the elephant in the room was that they had two first round picks and a lot of ammo draft capital, cap, draft capital, excuse me, to potentially make a move. Obviously, as I said before, one of those moves was taken away as part of the punishment for the tampering scandal. Um, but still, with a first round pick, second round pick, I mean, all, I mean, that, that's still draft capital to move around. And I think that, you know, the, with the play that Tua has had or shown in the first half of the year, I think that also maybe kind of gave the front office, um, you know, a lot of confidence to say, okay, like we're, we're okay with giving up all these, you know, these draft picks, these high, uh, this high draft capital to make a move because we feel certain that we have a quarterback who's on a young rookie contract. He's playing way, he's playing well above, um, you know, the value that he's bringing is well above the the contract that he's making. Um, and, and we're fine with, with giving up those draft picks. So again, I think it's a testament too to the, the organization's faith in Tua. Um, and it's interesting to kind of look ahead because as part of, you know, the reporting when this news came out, um, you know, it was reported that the Dolphins are going to make, um, they're going to work out a long-term deal with this contract. As I said before, he's in the fifth year of his rookie deal. Um, we know how much talented pass rushers cost on the open market. Emmanuel Agba is making $15 million this, this year. Um, I can only imagine Bradley Chubb is going to be maybe upwards of $20 million right now, according to um, over the cap, the Dolphins of $24 million in cap room. Obviously you can make, make space and whatnot. Um, but it is interesting. You know, uh, I know off the top of my head, outside of him and Christian Wilkins, there's not a lot of guys who a lot, a lot of guys that I think are going to, um, you know, cost a lot of money for the Dolphins next year. So that is interesting just to kind of look ahead. Um, obviously, it appears that um, they don't want this to be a one year rental or a half year rental. Um, I hope the Dolphins weren't didn't give away a one uh, a first round pick for a half year rental. Um, so that's just something down the line. It is going to uh, cost a lot of money to uh, to, you know, re-sign him and keep him in Miami. But Chris Greer has shown that money money is no object, uh, obviously. Yeah. And, and you know, you don't make this deal unless you know you can, you know, you can sign him long term. It just it just makes. I mean, yeah, I just said you have to go for it when you can, but you also have to go for it with that knowledge that, OK, we can sign this guy long term. And. Yeah, I, I think it again it does nothing but help the defense and, you know, makes a good defense better uh, and. So, uh, yeah, it definitely shows a lot of, also shows a lot of confidence into to it. But yeah, you know, it's just also where they are. They look, they looked and they said, "Okay, we can do, this. we can be that team." And so let's and it, let's get let's get it together and let's be that team. And it's aimed at, yeah, you know, obviously aimed at. You got you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get pressure on Josh Allen. And if you get past that, you're going to have to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes, 
Joe Burrow. Um, and you're going to have to, or you're going to have to chase Lamar Jackson down. And, you know, that's, you have to have a defense that can do that. If you don't have a defense that can do that, you have to rely on one of the, those guys to have a bad day and make some unwise decisions. Um, let the clock run out at the end of the half when they're right on the goal, when they're right on the goal line at the end of the half of the championship game or something, you know, so that's simply it. And, um, you know, let's see, good for them. Now let's see how it works out. Yeah. We'll see. Um, Obviously, it's a lot of moving parts to it, but we'll see if, you know, he's able to I – mean, I'm assuming he'll, he'll be in practice in the next 24 to 48 hours. Obviously, the team practice is Wednesday, um, you know, Thursday, Friday. So we'll see if he's able to, you know, kind of get get his bearings and, you know, maybe um, be available for uh, Sunday's game in Chicago. Um, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back on the other side of things, we're going to discuss that aforementioned game against the Chicago Bears. The Dolphins add another win – to this two game winning streak. Um, were you encouraged by their comeback win over the Lions? We're gonna talk all about that. So stay locked with us. What's going on everybody? Still here on the Dolphins and that podcast talking all things Dolphins with David Neal. Uh, so in the first half, we touched on the Dolphins big moves for Bradley Chubb, as well as acquiring Jeff, Jeff Wilson, the running back from the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and like we said, this, uh, this speaks of a team that is ready to, to go on a run, go on a deep run into the postseason to be specific. Um, and if they want to do that, they're going to have to continue to stack wins. We talked about this uh, this month-long stretch of the schedule. They were facing a lot of teams under 500, an opportunity to really rack up wins before that, that vaunted December slate that includes games um, against the San Francisco 49ers, uh, the Chargers, the Packers, the Bills. Um, and next on the list is the Chicago Bears, but I want to kind of kind of go big picture since we're at kind of like the, the week eight, week nine, halfway point of, of the season. Um, and, and I want to start with the defense, you know, with obviously with the move of Bradley Chubb. We, we, obviously, we didn't see that. We didn't see that happening. We didn't know that was going to happen. You know, hours before we were kind of planning out uh, the, the, the this recording. Um, but is this a unit that now with Bradley Chubb in the fold, you think can get things in order? Because we saw this unit at its best. And then at its worst, or at its worst, and then at its best in the win over the Lions, giving up 27 first half points, um, the the second most passing yards they've allowed all season, only to the Bills game, um, the defensive line out of sorts, the pass rush not really getting to Jared Goff, and then we saw them turn things around and the pass rush come to life, um, the secondary with more tight coverage and shutting the Lions out. Um, even with Bradley Chubb in the fold, I mean, I I was of the mindset before this move that I thought like, hey this just might be an average defense, an average at best defense, um, given the injuries that they have and, you know, the the adjustments that they've had to make. I, I was just thinking, hey, this might be a defense that gives up 24, 25, 26 points a game, and you need your offense to be on its P's and Q's and be, um, you know, at its best most days, you know, most Sundays um, during the season. Um, but now, I mean, with Bradley Chubb, we'll see we'll see what impact he can make and how quickly he can, he can learn this playbook and you know, kind of ingratiate himself with, with this defense. Um, but you kind of you you you, get, you see a team that maybe could get back to that 2021 form um, in the second half of the season, that 2020 form um, when they're really you know lights out, getting to the quarterback, forcing turnovers, not allowing a lot of points. And I mean, if you if, if you have an offense that plays the way that it did on on Sunday, last Sunday against the Lions, um, which really was kind of what most of us expected entering the season. I mean, scoring on five of your first six possessions, I don't know if that's going to happen every Sunday, but the efficiency and the ease with which, you know, they're moving down the field, I think that's what, what a lot of people expected um, with this with this unit. And now, again, if, if those can come together, I mean, if you can, if you can get the second half of the Lions game, if you get the second half of that game, you know, more often than not the rest of the season, Okay, you're you're working with something. I mean, this is a team that's dangerous, and I I mean I look at it like I don't know if the Dolphins are going to be able to catch up with the Bills in the AFC East standings. I mean, shoot, they they got to make sure that um, they can get above the jet the the Jets and that the Patriots don't lap them. But I'm telling you, I mean, if they if they can continue to stack up wins and if they're presumably a wild card, I mean, this isn't a team that I want to face in January 
you know, in late December and January. I mean, that's not a team that I want to play because the offense can score 30. When they're on, the offense can score upwards of 40, to be honest. Um, and if the defense get things together, again, we've seen, like, the, the defense has, not, has had some bad moments, but we've seen the, the shades and, and the signs of that unit from last year that really took off. Um, so, again, I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just waiting to put it together. I mean, I, don't, I still don't think they've really played a complete game. I mean, I'm thinking back to some of the wins that they've had, and they haven't had that complete game. That I mean, they they've had the offense clicking for the fourth quarter of the Baltimore game, uh, the entirety of the Lions game. But the offense, I mean, but the defense maybe not there. They had the defense play well, but the offense dropped the ball. I'm, we're we're still waiting for that for that complete game to to come together. Um, but I think the good thing for them, if you're a Dolphins fan, is you know it's halfway through the through the season, and you're seeing tangible improvements. I mean, you're seeing the offensive line tangibly improved with blocking. Tua hasn't been hit much. The running game, as we alluded to before, it's starting to click. And then, and now you see the potential with the defense. I don't know if Byron Jones is going to come back. I'm not counting on it. <laughs> so this might be the group that they got to rock with. But still, but still, but Cater, but Cater, Cater who is looking good. Noah's been a little bit improved. I know he didn't have the best game on Sunday last Sunday, but he's a bit improved. Um, Javon Holland didn't have the best game last Sunday, but he, it looks like they're going to kind of put him in a new role now that Brandon Jones is, is gone. But the, but, but, but the pieces are there. I mean, you have the pieces and the foundation for this defense to, pull, put, uh, to turn things around and be a dominant unit in the second half of the season. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they, they, I think that they're healthy. Um, and I think Byron, it, it, you're going to see a Charlie Chris rally in Hialeah before we see Byron Jones in the Dolphins lineup. Um, so uh, the, let's just take him out of the equation. Um, but healthy, it's a very good unit. I still potentially a very good unit. You add Bradley Chubb, you got that again. It's your first line of defense is the pass rush. Um, and they haven't played what you would say is a, you know, a game where you're, you're okay, boy, what a great offense, what a great defense. And, you know, but they have played, they've, they played just enough complimentary football that, you know, they are where they are. And, you know, you know, they lost the, their losses were kind of understandable. I mean, you didn't have your starting quarterback play the full game in any one of them. And uh, so, you know, they're five and zero oh when you're the guy who starts the game ends the game. And those are the five games where it's been the number one guy. So uh, I think as the running game comes along, that's also going to, I think that always helps out the defense. That always helps out the defense. Um, so can this defense get back to where it was? Yeah. I mean, and I, I, and I don't, and I really don't even think it needs to get like, they were playing at a top 10, top 15 level. I mean, top, top 10, top five level in the second half of the season. If the offense starts to click and look more like it did on Sunday, the rest of the season, I only, I think it can be average. No, no, right. no, no, no. It it can't. No, it it can be average to get through the season, but it's it can't be average to you know to give you any any sort of January that you want. I mean, of course, of course, you got to be playing better football than. Of course, you got to be playing. You got to be playing. You got to be playing better defense than that, and you need. But I don't think it needs you, to be like historically. It doesn't need to be historically. No, no, it doesn't need to be historically good. No. Great, but it needs to be very good because you you need to at least slow you need to at least slow down Buffalo and 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 um, yeah and that's that's hold, what I'm saying under, that's what I'm saying you need to hold slow them down you need to you need to hold Kansas City under forty. And, I mean, I think I, I think they can do that on a on a, on a on a on a solid day. You know, if they're not having a complete off. Have you they, seen Kansas City in January? The last few Januarys, 
I they, have, but I've seen, I've seen them. They go down, them. they go down fourteen, and they don't care. <laughs> They're like, no. okay, fine. You, oh, we we down, we're down twenty. Oh, we'll, we'll but, yeah, but, but, but I'm starting to get the same. I mean, again, I'm starting to sound like Tyree Kill, but I'm starting to get the same vibes from this Dolphins uh, offense, no, no, where no, they no, can no, go I'm, down by ten, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Like they can win so shootouts. One, you just don't. One team has one team has done it the last what four <laughs> playoffs. They they have done it every you know every single year. Oh yeah, they're they're down by a jillion. Oh yeah, they're down. Oh yeah, they're down. They're they're down with 13 seconds left. You know, oh okay, we're going to overtime. I mean, that's what I mean. You, they need to be playing. Bet they need to be very good to deal with probably what's probably going to come. Now Cincinnati's going to be. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get. We don't know what's going to be there with Cincinnati, but definitely if you just say Buffalo and Kansas City, you got to get go through one of them. And you're probably going to have to go through one of them there. Um, your defense has to be very good. It's just going to have to be very good because both those teams, I think by that point are just going to be on, you know, I, I don't think they're going to, I don't think there's going to be a replay of the kind of game, what you saw in, um, in Miami gardens uh, earlier this year with Buffalo between Buffalo and Miami. And so, yeah, they need to be very good. Can they be very good? Yeah, I think they can be. Um, it you know, didn't look like that the first half of the Lions game, but you know, the Lions seemed like the, the Lions seemed like they were they came out and they were again they were just they were clicking on all the cylinders. They got some guys back. They were they were kind of juiced. They were they were feeling feeling themselves a little bit, and it just seemed like you know coming out in the second half. You know, even at halftime, I'm sure the Dolphins are sitting there going, okay, they've done all this, but look look where we are. And on the other side, when you're one and five or whatever their record was, we they looked at that and they looked and said, wow, look, look, at we've scored on every drive. We're like, and we are, ooh, they are right there still. Ugh. And I mean, it's the NFL. Um, unless you are decisively better than your opponent, yeah, it's kind of like everything's going. Things are going to happen. Go come back to the mean, and you knew the Lions were going to be able to keep that up, and they weren't. The Dolphins' defense was not going to keep giving that up. They didn't. The Dolphins' offense, on the other hand, was still playing against a defense that you know that they, it was the Sunday buffet defense. And so they were going to keep doing what they need to do. They were going to score as often as they need to score to win that game. If the Lions, if the Lions had come down and scored a touchdown and made it 34-31, I, I had no, I had, I had no, I doubt. Had no doubt in my mind that I mean, yeah. honestly, but, when, but boom, 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 38-34. Okay, good. When Alec when Alec Engle scored that touchdown in the Dol- and then the the Dolphins forced a punt, and I think I believe that was the first point of the game. I was like, yeah, this game is over. I was like, I, was like, I, I had no doubt in no. my mind. They were gonna go and score whenever, whenever, whenever it was. I had no doubt that they were gonna take right. the lead, and then they were gonna be able to make the stop when they needed to. And obviously, we saw how that ended. Right, and I, and I and okay, and that's that's the way it should work. If you are the Miami Dolphins, you fast you fashion yourself a contender in the AFC, in the AFC, and really in the NFL, and uh, you're playing the Detroit Lions, who are not. And uh, same thing this week, uh, you know, the bear, we, you know, the bears, I think had a glimmer of hope after they punked the Patriots on Monday. I just pushed them around, you know, um, and then, then got, you know, a slap of reality from Dallas. And that's when they said, okay, <laughs> oh, I don't know what we were thinking. Uh, so they realize who you know where they are as a team, and the Dolphins have to come in and kind of do the same thing with with the Bears. It's like you know, okay, even if they come out running the ball well, which is what the Bears do, um, you know, I think eventually it's going to you know it's going to eventually come out the better team is going to win. That's probably the Dolphins. Uh, it should be the Dolphins. Um, and their defense should, 
you know, hope it stands up to that running game. I, I didn't see the Bears punk and the Patriots the way they did. I mean, they, you know, pushed them halfway to Providence, but, you know, what they rack up 230, 250 yards rushing or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Um, but I don't see the Dolphins giving that up. Uh, yeah, but that's what the Bears do. And if the, if, if the Dolphins can just hold that in check, and also if the Dolphins, you know, on offense, you know, bing, 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 you know, let's get a couple of touchdowns early. 14 0, suddenly the Bears, eh, they, they, they have time to run the ball, but NFL coaches never think they, they do. So they're, they're going to be completely out of their game plan and, you know, it's going to should go up and smoke and then it should be a route. But, you know, one way or the other, the Dolphins should do, do to the Bears, you know, do with the Bears what the sec, we should see the second half of that Lions game. We should see there's going to be, should be 20, 25 minutes of game time that that should be happening in Chicago on Sunday. Uh, if it's early, then, you know, you got an early KO. Uh, if it's later, you get the Detroit game. Yeah, I, I definitely think that this is, you know, I, I didn't pick a blowout last week because, you know, I, I said I'm not going to pick. I don't think I'm going to pick a blowout for a while. But um, I do think that it's a matchup that favors the Dolphins on both sides. I mean, starting with the the um, the Bears offense going against the Dolphins defense. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the Dolphins are equipped with their defensive front and their front seven um, to, to really, you know, neutralize that running game. And we've seen in recent weeks, you know, the uh, the Bears are doing you know, some a lot of stuff that we've seen. They're able to do with Lamar Jackson, the quarterback design runs. Um, I think that the, the Dolphins can snuff that out. I mean, just like we saw them do last year um, against, the, against the Ravens on Thursday night. And this isn't a team that's equipped – to to go you know to, to to make it a track meet as Dan Campbell said he said I, I don't want to make this a track meet and it was the 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 Lions were more way more equipped to do that than the Bears are you know we know that right. they just traded for Chase Claypool I don't know if he's going to be able to play in time if he's going to be able to kind of get acclimated with the play playbook in time but even with him in the fold I, this is just not a team that has the offensive personnel and the wide receivers and the tight ends um to, to go you know drive for drive in the air, you know, throwing the ball everywhere. Justin Fields just isn't there in his development and he doesn't have uh, the teammates to do it. And on the flip side, I mean, after you trade two of your, you know, arguably, I mean, I think Roquan Smith and um, Robert Quinn, who they just traded to to the uh, Ravens and the Eagles respectively. I mean, those are their two best defenders. I mean, they're, they're, in, they're in kind of a rebuild situation, you know, trying to get the draft capital and the salary cap space to build this team around Justin Fields. Um, but on defense, I mean, they weren't very good to begin with. I mean, you trade away your two best defensive players, um, you're only going to get worse. So, again, I mean, this is a game where, um, you know, the Lions game, I'll, I'll give credit to, to the Dolphins, specifically to, we haven't really spoken too much about Tua, but real quick, I thought that that was maybe Tua's best game of his entire career, um, just the the ease and the poise um, and, and the comfort with which he, you know, commanded that entire game. That was probably um, the, the the best game that I've seen him play. Um, so, you know, shout out to him. Um, but, but again, you know, it was the Lions. It's kind of what I expected against, you know, in a, a defense that's given up the most uh, points per game um again I, I like to see it again you know when you have the matchups when you have um you know the, the, the advantage and the Dolphins are going to have the advantage most Sundays than not with their wide receiver core against the opposing team secondary um, I, I want to see it again I want to see them move the ball down with ease um try to eliminate some of those penalties that we've seen that's kind of messed up the drives um and put the put the put the ball in the end zone and, and you know again I, I'm not going to pick a blowout because again, it's just so so tough, and I think the the, the Bears will give a, give a fight. I mean, they're at home, sh uh, Chicago Soldier Field. I mean, we we know the history behind that that stadium, and you know they're a team that plays hard. Um, but in the end, there's just too much talent, like the talent disparity. The the Dolphins. This this is a game that the Dolphins shouldn't win. I mean, we just talked about them kind of announcing and signaling that they're contenders. This isn't a game. I mean, you can have a slip up, but this isn't the type of game um, that you lose if you are truly a contender. So I think the Dolphins, um, you know, they, they kind of handle this game from start to finish. Um, and again, I think I picked like a 10 point win last week. Uh, I'll go somewhere along those lines again, you know, 30 to 17, um, 28 to, to, to 13, something like that. But I think the Dolphins really coast and take care of business in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, it's it, obviously if, you know, there are things that can happen, then, 
like you know weather um you know yeah i've not seen the weather report uh, but obviously now, chicago in, in, in the fall you never know but, you know you don't I mean, know I don't think it's not gonna be snow rain, or rain. Like yeah no no snow, snow is fine snow is actually not bad, that bad for, for, for i've seen great a lot of great passing days in the snow but it's the uh, it's when you get the with the with the rain the wind, and the, ball the wind gets and the rain and the wind, yeah that's a problem. That can make it be a problem. And, um, you know, it, it makes the field yucky. Uh, you know, the, the speed guys are slowed down. Um, but also, if if the Bears successfully run the ball, they'll shorten the game. And uh, that's what you need to do against, you know, powerhouse offenses. Not, you still have to stop, the, stop them when they – you know, the, the explosive offense, I wouldn't say powerhouse offense. Let me hold on here. The explosive offense, you still have to stop them when they have the ball, but you obviously have to stop, stop them fewer times. If you shorten the game, you know, it's, and if the bears can run the ball successfully, uh, you know, they, you know, that does shorten the game, but the matchup you pointed out, uh, the dolphins offense against the bears defense, if if on the Dolphins, you know, you, you just you want to execute every drive every anyway, but really you you should really want this is the game where you really want to come out and like the Steelers game, um, you jump out, you know, 13 nothing, you know, and get a couple touchdowns up on them. Uh, I think that's and I think that completely i think that discombobulates chicago even more so than like the steelers who you know steelers have an experienced head coach experienced head coaching staff young team but you know the, the these guys are okay we're not panicking we've been here before we you know um chicago not as much there's a lot of inexperience up and down the staff up and up and down the lineup and i think you know yeah their offense with Justin feels right now is kind of like, you know, Ursatz Lamar Jackson, um, Ursatz Ravens offense. And uh so if, yeah, if the Dolph if the Dolphins jump on them early, I think they can get a, you know, get it, get get them get out of there early and get and put them in a situation where the Bears just don't want to be in. And then they can really tee off. If they don't then it's it'll be a fight it'll be a fight and uh the bears won't go away easily then and so they put up 31 indoors and against detroit and that great defense Ew. um you know what i'm going to i'm going to say they get a uh, a short field or a defensive score somewhere in there and I'll go 34-17. 34-17, even more points than last week. Yeah, because they, they I'll, and I'm giving them the credit for the, the short field defensive score, which they, gotcha. uh, yeah, last week they just, you know, they, they had to work for it, sort of, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're both taking the Dolphins in, in a game where we agree the talent, uh, the talent disparity, the matchups, they all lean to toward the Dolphins. Um, but as I always say, that's why you play the games on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we're, every, everybody's like one injury from, you know, we're one or two injuries or, you know, turnovers or, you know, you know, freak events for some, from, you know, some whack, whack result. You get it every week in the NFL, but, you know, look, this is this is where the I mean look these teams are where they are the Dolphins are where they are and this is a time where they yeah they need to they need to build up wins you know build up your wins build up your stats build up your whatever yeah, this is what and this is what good teams do you know yeah good teams yeah. if you're very good if you fashion yourself a contender you come out and you take care of business here and you move on yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to start stacking, uh, like you said, stacking wins to keep pace, um, you know, in the division, um, starting to look ahead. You know, we're halfway through the season, starting to look ahead um, toward, you know, playoff standing, seedings and whatnot. So we'll see if they can do that on Sunday. 
Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of the Dolphins in Depth podcast. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, reminder as always, subscribe, like, share, comment, subscribe to the Miami Herald YouTube page as well as the Miami Herald. There's going to be a ton of updates as the week goes on on new Dolphins, Bradley Chubb, Jeff Wilson, as well as the Dolphins upcoming game against the Bears on Sunday. We'll be back next week to recap another weekend of Dolphins football. But until then, you guys take care. See you.